record this meeting. Oh, now it says it's being recorded. There. Finally, we're up. <laughs> Yay! Success. Okay. Wow, that was really long. Hey, listen, I'm also not an expert, and I don't know how to edit this out. So <laughs> this is all going to be in there. Okay, there's nothing I can do. Um, all right, let me try and find the uh, the screen. Where is the screen? I've lost it. This is what happens when you have too many open web browsers. Too much stuff. Oh, there we go. Ta-da. All right. Well, we'll figure a way. Okay, guys. So let's talk about the newbie trader. Wow. If you can hear my voice, if you're still off in the kitchen making a, a sandwich, come on back. <laughs> I don't know what to say. But now that I know how to do it, hopefully we won't run into this issue again. So let's talk about the newbie Forex trader. All right. From beginning desire to a Battle hardened soldier. This is where we want to go, right? And it's it's not easy. Okay, I'm gonna tell you right now, it is not easy to get there. It is a long, long journey. So you think you want to trade Forex. What is it really like? What's what's really involved? The reality of it, okay? Everybody sees all the ads, make millions of dollars, you know, trade when you want. And it's designed to sucker in a constant flow of cash money. They don't care what it is, guys. It can be small accounts of $100 or $500. It can be little tiny accounts of $1,000 to $5,000. Hey, they don't care if you're going to throw $50,000 at it. The market makers need your money, and they need your account. They have to make $20 million a day in order to live, just to stay alive and pay their evil henchmen, their minions, okay? Uh, picture the Minions movie with, when they turned evil. It's kind of like that. They don't care if you blow out in a day or a week or a month. They don't care. They don't care if you keep funding your account for years and years on end. They just want your money. So the ads are designed to sucker your interest and to get you to feed them. Now, this can be a profitable business to trade, but most traders are just not going to last. And the reason why is because they want it all right now, they want it really, really fast. And if they can't turn a few thousand into many tens of thousands of dollars quite quickly, all right, they're going to give up. And this is the wrong mentality. This is the wrong way to trade. There are so many people out there that are gamblers and have a gambling mentality. And all they want to do is go, go, baby. They want millions in a half a year. It's crazy. All right. So if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. We're all rich. Okay. Trading can be hard, and it's, and it's not easy, because if it was easy, everybody would be doing it, and everybody would also be rich. But you just can't have everybody feeding from the same, you know, trough and, and getting fat. All right. Most can't do this business. It's, it's not that learning to trade correctly, the right way, is all that hard. It's not. But it's the discipline. You see that word right there? Discipline. Nobody likes it. And it's the, the patience coupled together. The patience to wait for the right signal, not to be a gambler. Discipline to do what you know to do when you should be doing it, when you see it, okay, when you see what's right. Once you've been trained for the right setups, it's really not that hard. It's just kind of boring. You're sitting around all day bored, waiting for stuff to move. But everybody wants it now, and so they take, they take these big risks, and they go too high, and they lose, and they get mad. All right? Think about the guy that just lost 10% of his account. He, may, he tries to make a little bit bigger of a trade, and then before you know it, he loses 20 or 30% of his account. His count is really down. So he went from ten grand to say seven thousand bucks, right? Well now he's mad. <laughs> All right? So now he starts revenge trading. He starts doing stupid things, upping his position size. 
doubling up, trying to gain it all back, see? And, uh, and, and if he takes another hit and he gets sucked down to 50% or less, revenge trading kicks in. And then he really wants to make it all back. So a lot of times people will blow their accounts down to, you know, 30%, 20%. They'll go crazy in one last ditch effort to try and win it all back. And, you know, I, I hope that most people that do this kind of stuff do it with demo accounts, not with real accounts. Because if you blow out, you can just reset it and try and forget it. But if you, if you blow out a demo, all right, or even real money, and you do this a lot, and you just do this again and again and again, it's going to instill bad habits in you. Habits that if are, they are not controlled, it will lead to disaster in your real life. And all I can say is pain and frustration awaits you if you go on that path. If you trade too big to start, you're in for pain. So a lot of traders seek the holy grail. Okay, the first average uh, traders out there, they, they start out, they, they hang out in news channels, they hang out in trade forums and free chat rooms. And believe it or not, there is a couple of uh, free, you know, chat rooms out there. And, and that's where they hang out. And they lurk on Twitter. They try to find, you know, free trade ideas given by people that they deem are more knowledgeable than themselves. Right? And I, and I hate to say names, but... Um, Eh, what the heck, I'm going to go ahead and do it. <laughs> I can. I can not say names. You know why? Because it's my trade room. That's why I can say names. And this is for members, and there ain't nobody going to see it. You've all read my, uh, my article on the trade rooms? Okay. Ashraf Ladi, Aladi, Ashraf Aladi, okay, he talks so big. And he's on TV. And he's so smart. He must be great. Go sign up for his trade room. He doesn't have a trade room. You know what he has? He has a newsletter. It's $99 a month. And see what you get joining his newsletter. <laughs> oh my God. You know why I'm laughing? Because I did it once. I just wanted to see. What is the guy like? Does he give any decent ideas? I can tell you I stayed for one month. <laughs> that was it. He got my 99 bucks one time. You know what he sends out? An email. You get one, maybe two emails in a whole week and that's it so you you might get four to eight emails in a month with one idea here and there and I'm telling you, you guys okay there's other other people out there like for instance the people um, that do Elliott Wave and he works for um, FXCM what's his name Jamie Setley right Jamie Setley and he'll put all these cool Elliott Wave ideas out there, right? And you'll sit there and look at it and be totally confused. And you're like, wow, that looks pretty good. This guy must know what he's doing. He's a chief currency strategist. My God, with a name like that, chief currency strategist. Holy cow, he must be good. You put the trade on. You know what? <laughs> you're going to lose about 70 or 80% of the time. I'm sorry, it's the truth. But this is what the beginning trader does. They're looking for the holy grail. So they'll hang out on Twitter, try and find some ideas put out there by people. They'll, they're in free chat rooms and forums and all kinds of other things, right? And they'll sign up for EFX News because, oh, it's the bank traders' trades. Surely the bank traders aren't going to lie to us. I just paid $99 a month for the bank traders' trades. Bam, you lose. Bam, you lose. And my God, it just hits you and hits you and hits you. And at the end, you're like, what the heck is going on? So then you figure, okay, I got to take the human element out of this, right? I'm too, I'm too impulsive and I get too mad. And, you know, so they sign up for um, robots. All of this is in search for the perfect system. You're going to get a robot that will discretionary trade for you. It takes the human element out, okay? Any of this sound familiar? You're all, it's, it's everybody searching for this perfect system that, that never fails, it has a really high win ratio, loses very little relative to how much it makes, and that's what people are searching for. It's the truth. Now, this is not a casino. It's not a gambling house. Douglas said it best. We know nothing for sure, and we don't have to in order to make money. I really hope that you will take that word right there, that sentence right there, 
and swallow it down. Repeat after me. We know no Wait. Repeat after me. I know nothing for sure. And I don't have to in order to make money. This is so important that you grasp this. All right? Because if you don't grasp this, you're going to go through life thinking, I have to be certain. I must know. I need to know. What is the target? What is the stop loss? These are the newbie traders' questions. They want certainty. They want to know certainly where it's heading today. Where do you see this heading today? Where do you see it heading tomorrow? I, I'm not the weather guy. I can't predict the weather. I don't know anything, and I don't have to in order to make money. And that's the most amazing thing. And it's absolutely true. But if you think that you need that certainty, you are going to be so hesitant to place trades. You are going to be so off in your game, always second-guessing yourself. I don't mean to get off track, but I, I'm, the, the, the stuff is flowing, and i got to put it out there, okay? You need to understand the market maker's business model. It's not our business. It's not, I am involved in the business of being a Forex trader. That's incorrect. I am involved in being a reader of the Forex market, knowing what the market maker is going to do or most likely to do. And I am this little barnacle on the side of his boat, okay? I just need a little tiny piece of money. What are those uh, animals that, that go with whales? Does anybody know? There's some kind of animal, uh, a, a fish, a creature. They swim with whales. And they and did you ever see that? Like, uh, what what is that plant, that planet movie? Was it Blue Planet? They have this place in the world where all the sharks and all these horrible creatures go to, right? They would normally eat you alive, like barracudas and stuff. But they pull into this place. It's like a little station where they can open their mouth and these creatures will come in and and uh, clean their teeth. You know, it's like dentist repair, all, the, all this stuff going on, right? It's a symbiotic relationship, all right? The market makers are the big whales in this business, and I'm simply riding their coattails. That's it. I have to understand it's their business, it's their model. It's not very hard to learn the market maker's methods, their model, their plans, okay? It's not that bad. But because it's something that they repeat constantly, and you've seen it. You yourself have seen it on the charts. It's been, it's been expressed to you in the charts. And they repeat this over and over and over again. The market is a giant oscillator. It oscillates between all these various major currencies, the strength, the weak, the weakness. It's easy to look at the charts way in the past and see that they repeat, okay, again and again, forever and ever. You can back test this. I'm not lying to you. Constantly. But no matter how much we look at the past price action, when we are in the moment of trading and we're putting money on the line and we're looking at the hard right edge of our screens, we don't see the move is complete. We get this fear and this worry and this uncertainty. We don't know what to do. You know, it's, it can be terrifying, right? Because you don't know how low it's going to go. That's where the magic or how high it's going to go like Canada a couple days ago. That's where the magic of trading small so that you can breathe comes into place. Knowledge is the key to power. If you trade too large, that's a problem. Placing too much account at risk relative to the account size, the improper position size leads to fear. And not counting the cost will lead to fear. So we have to have understanding of the market maker's model, their game plan, understanding of price action, and we have to have faith in ourselves, belief that we can get out of anything because we're trading small. And we got lots of capital to help us get out of trouble on the 5 or 10% bad trades that we might happen to make. Okay? Proper knowledge of how to make money 70 to 80% of the time is what we need. Okay? And, and what to do when we're wrong how to fix it. In a sense, we have to start at the bottom. 
and crawl our way up this ladder so that we learn to deal with all the psychological issues of trading. We give ourselves time to ad adapt to the ever-increasing position sizes, time to plateau and level off. All right. Um, let me just read what's going on here. Evening. Okay. All right. I'm sorry, man. I'll try and uh, go quicker, but uh, you can always watch it later. All right. Whoops. Wrong button. Let me go back. All right. So these are psychological issues. Okay. We have to give ourselves time to deal with it, time to get comfortable. Each new rung of the ladder, we have to learn to climb. It's, it's knowledge and wisdom that will destroy the fear. You ever hear fear is the mind killer? All right. It is. So forget everything that you think you know. Many coming in are going to have picked up bad habits in the world, analysis paralysis or faith in some broker given lagging indicators from some system that you learned, like an RSI deal or MAC, MACD, you know, um, CCI oscillators, Bollinger Bands that John Bollinger doesn't even use, et cetera, and so on. Just drop all that stuff. I, really, drop it at the door. It's baggage. It's very excess and you're just looking for an indicator to help you uh, to decide. You're looking for certainty. That, that's the certainty equation. And you, you think all those indicator, indicators that the broker gives you for free are going to help you? I mean, really? <laughs> They're not. They're going to drag you down to depths you don't want to go to. 90% of the traders in the world lose money. You've heard that, right? Okay, everybody's heard that. 90% lose, 10% make it. If 90% lose and 90% are using every indicator under the sun, rainbow oscillators, parabolic SAR, um, why would you use those things? We have to do the opposite of what they do. Many times people should be buying when they're selling and they should be selling when they're buying. Think about it. 90% do the wrong thing. The market makers want you to act. They are trying to trick you and paint a picture. The charts are a, are a lot of times a false picture. That trend that you're looking at when, when U.S. Canada is just going up, up, and away like mad and hitting 786 fib and an 886 fib, etc. Let me just get this up. I, I got to show it to you. Let me see. Where were we? It was right here. Okay. They were buying. They were buying. They were buying all that day. All that day. One, two, three days. All day long. Four days. Look at it. All of that. And you tell me. We were supposed to be buying? What was I saying? I was saying short. And a lot of you were fearful, fearful, concerned. And look, boom, right through our target and even lower. You get it? A lot of times people that are buying and buying and buying, they can't get enough of something. It's like sliced bread. They should be selling. They shouldn't be buying. It's not good. Pardon me. Okay. Um, we have to learn to do the opposite of what the crowd is doing. So I just want you to think that way. It's very, very important. The market makers know all of these indicators that they dish out. They know all the systems that anybody in the world has ever bought. You're not going to buy some robot for $97 that is going to turn you into a millionaire. You know, in, in uh, six months, you're going to go from five grand to one million in six months all for $97. It doesn't work. They're, they're never going to sell it to you for that, okay? The bank traders would hook up to that, and that would be the end of it. So they want you to use it. They want you to use robots. They are paid to blow out your account, guys. I'm not kidding. They high-five each other. They get bonuses. They, they want you to be cannon fodder. So I ask you, do you want to be the 10% that make it? If you want to be the 10% that make it, you have to stop doing the wrong thing. You have to start thinking like a contrarian. At very particular times, you want to be a contrarian. 
Now, in the Bible, there's this uh, saying in Jeremiah, uh, I think it's Jeremiah 5, maybe. I think it's chapter 5. O foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, and which have ears and hear not. Think about that. There are people that can see, but they don't really see. They have ears, they don't really hear. <laughs> and there's another verse in the Bible. Oh, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Okay? Look at this. Th these are all Bible quotes, right? But I'm putting it in here for a reason. The Bible even says there's going to be false teachers among you. Okay? If there was ever a case of the blind leading the blind, it is in this business right here. People go out and they read books, they take courses, they rehash stuff. And in theory, it sounds very, very good, right? Some people even join, like, with other teachers, like FX gurus, okay, that have their little system. They hook up with them, they join with them for a little while, and they learn all that they can. And then they go off and they kind of rehash it, repackage it, whatever, and try and sell Whatever they can get it for, just whatever they can do. They'll go on Facebook and all kinds of other places, sell their little magic system, right, for whatever they think they can get for it. These are the blind leading the blind. Both are going to fall into the pit. And I am not joking. Empty yourself of all the crap that you think you have learned. I really want you to let it go. It's not going to work. It's not going to make you rich. If you're not pulling thousands of pips every month right now, okay, why continue? Why keep going? All right? Why do it? Um, Philip, I'll get to that question. I, I just want to run through this first. We'll do a question thing afterwards, okay? So the key, the key to this is that you've got 90% of the people losing, and you've got all these false teachers out there. If you just type in on an Internet search engine, you know, Forex trading, Forex training, Forex this, that, and the other. Just change the words. You will find thousands and thousands of websites. If they're all good, how come there's not like 50,000, 250,000 Forex traders and they're all rich and everybody's making money? Okay? There's only 10% making it. So, I don't want you to be forever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. If you waste your time jumping from one thing to another, one system to another, hoping to get some magic formula or the Holy Grail, you're being crazy. It's like, it's like church hopping. You're going to hop from one church to the next church to the next church, or one religion to the next religion to the next. You'll never find anything, okay? Stay in one place. There are wolves out there. They want you to waste your time trying to figure it out. And they're hoping that you will just be this trader that for the next three, four, five years continually blows out, loses money, refunds their trading account every chance they get. They're popping another grand in, another two grand in six months later, another five grand in when you get your income tax, you know, whatever. They just, they just want you to, to keep putting your money in, jumping from system to system until you, until you just decide you're done, you're over. I got, a, I got an email, to, not an email today, a um, direct message today from a Twitter, uh, a guy that follows me on Twitter, but he never, you know, joined with me. And he was saying, I'm done. I've, I've just decided after all these years, it's over. I got I to gotta admit when I, I just can't do it. So he's given up. That breaks my heart, okay? It's up to us to decide when to stop all that crap. We need to decide to do something different. So I would ask you to lay aside every weight and the trading sins that doth so easily beset you and learn to run this Forex race with patience. Lay your system aside. We're not going to be gambling. We're not going to be doing get-rich-quick stuff. We're going to mix patience with discipline, focus, hard work, knowledge, wisdom, understanding. We are after a very mighty goal, guys. It's a mighty goal. And you tell somebody you're going to turn a thousand bucks into one million, you're going to do it in three years, and at the worst case scenario, it might take you four, but you really doubt it. I'm telling you, you're going to have to work your tail off to get there and do something radically different than other people do. 
Now, what kind of a trader are you? Okay, let's talk about that. Are you a very fast thinker? Can you react very quickly? Can you change your mind quickly, just like that? One minute you believe it's a long, but, you know, 15 minutes later you've reconsidered and now it's a short. Or do you hesitate? Do you make your choices very slow? Do you need to evaluate things a lot? This right here decides, in a sense, what kind of a trader you are. If you're very fast, then you're probably a scalper at heart. But if you need some time, right, you might want to be an intraday position trader that works off 15-minute charts and one-hour charts and four-hour charts. It's not hard to choose. This is an easy thing. If you see yourself as a mixture of the two above, then you have the best of both worlds. You can do all the styles of trading, swing trader, intraday swing trader, and a scalper. So I want you to choose what makes you the most comfortable inside of you. I don't want you to jump out of your comfort zone. We'll work on that later. <laughs> I do want to work on your comfort zone. It's the truth. I want you to learn to stretch your comfort zone. Okay. So we have to start in reality, not some fantasy world. We're not going to be doing demo trading here. We're not going to do it with $50,000 or $100,000 accounts either. Okay. People that do that just drink in the lust of trying to make five grand every day. Uh, and, and that'll come, but it's a lot later on. First, we're going to learn to crawl before we walk or run. Okay? Jesse Livermore would scold you so badly, he would say not to be a sucker. Okay? We do not want to be a sucker. Jesse Livermore would tell us there's a lot of suckers out there <laughs> searching around the Internet forums, chat rooms for all hot trading tips. We need to learn to use our own brains. I no longer go to any other trader ever. I don't care what their big name is. I won't look at Twitter. I won't take another trade call ever. I use my own brain because my brain is superior. I'm not saying I'm superior. Okay, don't make me say that. That you know, don't don't get me wrong and say that Robin Hood you know is arrogant and he thinks he's superior. I don't. I'm very easy to admit to you that I am one of the stupidest man, men alive on the face of the earth. That's no joke. I'm mostly a, like a, um, a moron, okay? Ignorant, moron, dumb, slow, okay? I'm not joking. I really am. I, I did the test and, uh, you know, my IQ came out pretty bad. It was embarrassing. But I have one highly particular cool set of skills. On another test I did, it was very long. I found out I got the fastest darn computer out there. In the brain, it works really, really quick. It's, it's like a, a $1,000 chip inside of a Commodore 64. Okay? That's, that's me. So I don't know what you call that, like idiot savant or something like that. I'm kind of an idiot, but I see certain things. Okay? So I'm not being arrogant, all right? When I, when I say that, I'm not, I'm not being arrogant. But what I'm, what I'm trying to say is... My own understanding that I have come to grasp with over 16 years of trading, and especially these last seven in Forex, I got it, man. I got it. Hook, line, and sinker. I don't need to go to another trader to get their opinion or idea on what I think the charts are going to do. I'm right 84% of the time. I didn't get there right away, okay? And, and you're not going to get there right away. But I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help cut. The learning curve, we've got to take this learning curve that you have, okay, because it takes four years to become, you know, practically anything in college, and I think six or eight years to become a doctor, something like that, right? Six for a lawyer, eight for a doctor, I don't know. But you've got this big learning curve. I'm trying to help you cut it fast. I want you to cut it in three months. I want you to go from be from beginner trader to intermediate to expert trader in three Three months is my goal. I'm hoping I can get you there. All right, so we use our own brains. No hot trading tips. And if you want that excitement, go to Vegas. Go gamble your money away. We're not going to be gambling, okay? This is for boredom, yawning, sitting on your butt, drinking tea, and, you know, you're tired and you didn't feel like staring at a screen for eight hours a day. Listen, millionaire traders sit in front of their screens for 8, 9, 10, 12 hours a day. I'm telling you. Crawl first, then you walk, then you run. No piling into trades, going all in, trying to get some overnight success. 
you load up on one trade trying to double your account overnight, you're going to get crushed. Here's the next thing. Each one of us leave, needs to leave our ego behind. Hold off on the desire to boast to everybody. Hold off on the desire to brag about your great trades, how much money you're making, how many pips you took, etc., unless you've called the trades. Now, if in the trade room, you know, the, the live room, you're calling them out, I am going to give you some serious kudos if you're calling them out. But if you say, like, you know, oh, I just made 185 pips on such and such, and I never saw you call it out, eh, <laughs> boo, you get the boo button right there, okay? That is zero place. We're all human. We're all subject to mistakes, by the way. I don't have anything to prove. I hope you guys don't have anything to prove. I am very happy to admit that I am wrong quite a bit. I'm often. It's often. And I'm okay with that, you know? I don't have to be a trading god, remember? I don't know anything for sure, and I don't have to in order to make money. I don't have to have any self-righteousness. I don't have to be boasting. I don't have to have an ego. Neither do you. Okay, we don't need praise. We need success. We don't need pats on our back about how great we are and ego strokes. We just need success. Let's just be humble and help each other in the war. Okay? It's really important, guys. Um, now, let's talk about the brokers and the bankers. They hunt for your soul. They are hunters. The statistics say you've got about a 90% chance of blowing out your account in a very few months of your account opening. Now, why is that? Why, why in one to six months do they figure you're going to blow out? Well, you are up against the brightest minds in the world. You're up against quants that have been written by mathematicians that you couldn't even begin to mathematically even quantify their salary, okay? These mathematicians are the most brilliant in the world. And when they write a quant that makes a hedge fund five, ten million dollars a day, <laughs> something like that, they're getting some serious money for that, okay? Their salary is linked into that, okay? Um, you're, you're up against high-frequency traders and, and high-frequency trading funds that capture the spread and just a little bit more. And they do it thousands and thousands of times a day. You're up against dark pools, pools of money that you don't even know they're there. They're hiding. They're lurking dark pools that are waiting for something insane to happen, and they go in with billions you may not know about that, but I'm saying it's big money, okay? You're up against bank traders. We're up against market makers and the very sharpest skilled traders. I wish I had the picture. I had a picture one time, something like 7,000 traders in a building as big as like multiple football fields. I mean, the thing was huge. I can't even imagine the amount of electricity that they sucked, okay? These guys are brilliant. You've got to throw all this stuff away. You and me, we're up against everybody. Throw away the BS indicators, the systems that don't work. Let's get right to the heart of the matter. It is the price action. It is the absolute king. Scalping is the meat and the potatoes of this industry. If bankers and quants and everybody else is going to do this a couple of thousands of times a day, now, we're not that fast, okay? I, I'm not that quick. I might only be able to do 20 to 100 times a day. I think I can kick back and watch the price action and enter right when the candles are telling me to do it. The most opportune time to do it. Now, these bankers might dump 200, 200 lots for five pips. And... Well, maybe they'll dump 150 lots for five pips. And the other 50 lots, they might swing it out for six or seven or eight. But when you and me are looking at um, the candles and we can kind of determine where things are going, we might be able to get a very decent 15 or 20 or something like that because we're not jumping into it as fast as they are jumping into it. They're fast. They're in. They're out. They're in. They're out. Much faster than me. Oh, a lot more. Okay. For us, we're looking for patience and discipline and focus and hard work. That's it. Just be realistic in your expectations of what it takes to make this work. A few hundred pips in a whole week 
It's an absolute life-changing event. Do you know there's traders out there that would practically kill themselves for 500 pips a week? I'm not joking. I, I've taught a lot of people to trade. In my career, 1,400 people passed through my doors in, in, in my whole life, okay? And I'm telling you that some traders I have heard, they said I would give my left pinky for 500 pips a week. If you do this right, with the proper size increasing at the right times, you are a millionaire in just a few years and a multimillionaire a few years after that. It is not that long. Now, many people don't believe that this is possible. I don't know why, but the math doesn't lie. If you can book 100 pips a day, just sit down and do the math. Figure it out yourself so that you're not taking my word for it. If you can make 100 pips a day through scalping alone, 20 trades, 15 of them are good, right? 75% winners, 5 are losers, 25 losses, and you just average a lousy 100 pips a day, if you do this properly, your account will go 100% in 5 months' time. And over 200% in a year, you're about 250% in one year. And we can increase this through this right here. Patience, discipline, focus, and hard work. You do that right there, and I, I'm telling you, you're going to shoot right over 250% in one year. Definitely. This can be done. Through price action understanding and all of the above, the above, we can do this sometimes in three months. The shortest I ever had it was in two months. I once did like 50% one month, 50% another month. Uh, back when Brexit happened, okay, I loaded up on DAX. My big account, I put 1.9 full standards on DAX. On the very day of the Brexit, I was into it so heavy. And on another account, I was in for 0.44, I think it was, or maybe it was, I think it was 0.44. I'm not sure. In one night, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, I woke up and I saw that German stock market gap down 1,000 points. I'm telling you, I couldn't click the button fast enough. Click, 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 I'm out, okay? I doubled my account in one night. That's rare. That's the most rare. I don't ever think that's going to happen again, okay? And truthfully, I, I guess I don't even want it to, in all honesty. That, that was, I was into it pretty heavy, all right? I finally figured out that it was going to happen, but uh, it was too much. All right, so let's talk about the surest way to a fast death. Trading without a plan in your head or written down is very bad. It is the fastest way to die of all is by fighting the trend. I'm talking about just continuing to pile into a trade that is clearly going against you. Now, I don't want you to take this the wrong way because when something is up seven or eight or nine days in a row and you start shorting it and you're building into a position, that is a very big difference from when something is down nine or ten days in a row maybe and places some kind of a daily buy bar and then you decide to start shorting it there's a big difference there remember the chart I showed you earlier okay we just looked at it one two and then it rested for a bunch of days so we'll forget those one two three four. look at that building short right there is a whole lot different and building short there in that bar, you build short in this bar, you're a dead man. You don't even live to see that day. Do you see my point? You are so dead when it gets there. The account's gone. There's nothing left to do. <laughs> Just refund it. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. So chasing a trend... And going against it is one of the fastest ways to your death. I just want you to realize that. It's a big difference. If you're going to fire bullet after bullet after bullet and just continue to load up until you're into something for 60 bullets, it's over. Okay? You won't even survive. But there are times to start going against a trend. But I'm not talking about that right now. I, I'm, just, I'm just meaning fighting and fighting and fighting like a stubborn fool. That's the fastest way to kill yourself. It's no fun. So what happens to us without a trade plan 
and without understanding in the market maker's goals and their business. Without understanding of the market maker's business model and faith in price actions gained by experience of watching charts and without any kind of a clear trade plan that's in our head, we don't really know what's going on. And that will lead you to a loss of confidence in your life. If you don't know what's happening, you're going to lose confidence. And this losing of confidence will give us confusion and it'll make you anxious. Your heart will palpitate. Okay? It's this, this right here is a, is a very bad thing. You don't want to go this way. This anxiety will make you want to search for some other kind of confirmation, like indicators or other trader opinions or newsletters, like we were talking about in the beginning, okay? News, maybe, all right? And this breeds emotional negativity for us all, and it'll mess you up in the head. This desire to be right or to be certain can affect your relationships with your entire family, your wife, your kids, your everything, your significant other, your your workers, whatever it may be, you're going to get all emotional. It'll create anger in you, frustration in yourself, anxiety in your trading day, and in all the choices that you make. It'll mess with your heads and create a barrier to trading success. So you don't want that, all right? Knowledge, wisdom, understanding, faith, with a clearly defined trading plan in place. This trading plan, you should have it written out. It's the best way to help you in your trading. As long as we obey this trading plan well, everything is good. All right? So here's the conclusion of the whole matter. In the Bible, there's a statement. It says, fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Right? It's the conclusion of the book of Proverbs. If you've ever read the book of Proverbs, you know it was written by King Solomon. He was the wisest man ever. Ever. There was nobody alive that was more smart than that guy ever. Okay, So in trading, let's turn this around, fear the pip god. I'm sorry, but you know, I have to say it this way. Uh, the, the, the pip gods are the market makers. Fear them. Keep your trade plan commandments, for this is the whole duty of the trader. You obey your trade plan at all costs. It is the master and you are the servant. Okay, I'm going to cover all of this much more in the lessons to come, but I want to suffice it to say right now that, that the trend truly is your friend, and the market makers are too. You don't have to hate them. We're going to ride their coattails. 90% of the folks out there want to fight the trend, but we want to ride the trend as swing traders. So if we're going to be piling into anything, we want to add bullets fired into a winning trend that has the power to sweep us away over the days ahead. All right? And we're going to reveal this in, in future lessons. We'll go into it in great detail. But when, when you see, I'm, I, I'm just on this example, so I guess I'm just going to go ahead and keep using it. Um, we're done now. And anybody have any questions, go right ahead and ask them now. This is a good time, and I will, uh, I will read them and get to them. Take a look at this right here. Let me get rid of that. Let me get rid of that. There it is. That bar. See the days? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm going to tell you that I was absolutely long-minded right there on that bar. I started buying long-minded, long-minded, big pause bar. Nothing but wanting it long. Nothing but long. Only thing I could think about, long. Okay? See the daily buy. See the next bar up. When you see this kind of stuff right here, what should you be thinking of? Nothing but long. Buy the dips. Buy the dips and hold it. Okay? And at some point, I can't remember where it was. It was either that day or that day. I got out of that and said, oh, no, short. Out too soon, yes, okay, yeah, but nothing but short-minded here and here, and down it goes. You get it? There is a time to be long. There is a time to be short, 
and there's a time to just kind of sit on the fence. Like uh, like Jesse Livermore would say, there's a time to just sit there and, and fold your hands and, and not do anything. All right, so let me see if we got some uh, questions here. Um, Philip, you're saying... Um, what do you think of retail sentiment indexes that are published here and there? Um, yeah, that's kind of hard. Are, are you talking like FXCM, like FXCM's uh, SSI or wh whatever that thing is called? I don't know if you're still in the room, Philip, or not. I let's see. Trader sentiment index, something like that. That's what I'm gonna. I'm gonna assume. Well, you know, it, it, it's a hard thing. I, I guess some of it would make sense to me, but sometimes not. I, I really don't want to focus all that much on what other traders are um, are thinking, uh, because a lot of times stuff is very contrarian organized. For instance, if you uh, if you look at this here, you know the pound yen. Okay, we're on a weekly chart. I can just tell you that. You know, traders were probably fighting this trend, and and every really big dip, people were probably getting long. So you had a tremendous amount of traders long in in here somewhere in here. But by the time it pulled back that far, okay, then you would have even more traders dramatically long minded, and so they'll publish that thing and say, uh, you know. The traders in, in uh, Great British Pound Japan are more li more long-minded than ever before in, in the history of the world. They'll, they'll say that, right? It, it'll be something huge, huge positions of uh, stacked long. But it's, it's because they're fighting a trend. It just keeps going down and down and down and crushing them to pieces. And they're getting more stacked, more long, more stacked. And it's really hurting them. And so the issue is that as it pops like this, a lot of people that were early bulls are going to be very anxious to get off. And you can clearly see the places they're going to get off. There is one of them right there, and there's another right there. So if this comes up here, you can, you can just tell there's going to be a lot of reaction there, and it's going to have to pull back. So I'd rather not be thinking what other traders are thinking. Because a lot of times the market will go the way to crush the most traders the most because that's where the, the biggest money is. Okay. But I'd rather be more of an of an intraday, you know, get away from the weekly and get into the lower time frames and be an intraday guy uh, on this. Stuff like this. I think it was over here several days ago, pretty sure, before the trade room even opened up. Um, somewhere in here, we were very long minded. And I had said something about it that the next time it goes, it'll probably go eight or 900 pips, you know. And, and it did. It went almost 900. But at that point, I'm looking at it as over. Um, okay. Let's push here and there. Stuart, on the DAX double trade, you must have stood to lose a lot if it had gone wrong. How did I manage the risk? Um, well, that, that uh, let me see if I have, I don't think I have, Is that it? That's, oh. It's not really, um, okay, I'm going to try and find it. I think it was this day right here, pretty sure. Okay, here's how I manage the risk, all right? This was the day that it occurred right there. And here's the gap down right there. Okay, and it was, it was a thousand point fall. What I was basically looking at was this section here and that section there. And that if I was wrong, that was my, my risk, was that the market may potentially come right up into that area, okay, right about there. And if I was wrong, it would crush me. It would, it would, <laughs> it would crush me. It would hurt. It would hurt really bad, okay. That would be a very big loss. I had like 1.9 standards on there. But I was, I was thinking about this, this high and thinking about how it had already rocked. Okay, look, look the day before. The news that happened right before was everybody was heavily thinking that they were going to leave, 
right? That they, that they were uh, going to bail out. But in the last few days, right there, the pressure let up and everybody's thinking they're never going to go. It's not going to happen. And so everything ripped higher. See? And so if you look at where my entry is in, in reality, um, well, it doesn't even work there. <laughs> it works here. Okay, I was getting short um, actually on that day, and I added significantly much on this day. So I was really in it, and I was feeling some pain, all right? But what was my risk? It was this much right here, where I would have had to stop out, take the loss, or I would have had to hedge up and go long. And look what the reward became, okay? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm telling you right now, I, it, it's it's eight to one, and I'm telling you, I at two o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, that's where it was. I clicked out as fast as I could. So I think I had about a one to eight, but I didn't know that at the time. I, I can only tell you that. I did not know that it was a one to eight risk reward at the time. I just knew I had a certain measure of risk and I wanted to see what was going to happen. And great blessing. <laughs> it's just great blessing. That's all I can say. Uh, one account doubled overnight. The other one did something like 70 or 80% in one night. I think it, I think I made, uh, I don't know if it was 28,000 or 33,000 in one night. It was incredible. And then the other account was, uh, I think, what did it hit? It hit 15, so it had to be 7, so what is 7 and 20? It was like $35,000 in one night. So, yeah, it was pretty cool. Does the market maker trade setup happen every week? Absolutely every week. Yes, it does. Uh, on almost every currency pair. Yes, it does. It's not seeing in the future, no, but it's reading everything coming together. Yeah, but Stuart, it had already ran so much. It had already ran so much, and, and I was thinking, even if they did not leave, that it would have gapped against me and been a sell-the-news event, and it would have just pulled back. I was really, really okay with taking a trade like that. I, I was okay with it. I mean, it would have hurt, but, you know, I, I think I would have been all right. Because a lot of times the, the news will come out and something will, will do something like that. They, they'll call it a gap and crap play. Just, just imagine that the news did come out that they, wouldn't, they didn't leave. And the market opened here. Okay? And rose like that. And stayed that way for a bunch of hours. And then pulled back and consolidated all day just like this. And things go away and, you know, down you go. Next couple of days, right back down. All right? Any other questions, guys? Um, we're going to handle a lot more than just what we covered today. Um, we covered in other sections, and I think I've gone tremendously over time. Really, really bad. I apologize for that. Any other questions at all? Discussed about tolerable risk. Example, 2%. However, no actual stop losses are in place in the trades we have taken. Are the stop losses done manually as when they come to hit certain areas in my mind? Um, no, Andy, that's actually a, a different thing, okay? And the way I look at it is, let me get rid of this for a minute and uh, see if I can get my trade platform up. Okay, so there's our trades that are currently in place, right? Now, you can see that we've only had two trading days. And in two lousy trading days, I have only booked in 5.51%. That's all. But magically, I'm down 5.78%. So technically, I'm underwater, right? And here's, here's the trades that are, are in place. Now, I know that the market is a giant oscillator oscillating between, between strength and weakness. And I was saying to you guys that you are determining on... I, I, what I was saying is that if, if you are the one to determine 2% risk on any particular pair or any particular trade, 
based on the candles. You've got to count your cost and count where you think it's going to go and look at the risk-reward parameters. The way I look at my trading is I am correct on approximately 70 to 80% of my trades. And every once in a while, I'm really lucky and I'll hit like a 90% success ratio. So this score that you see right here is growing all the time. It grows and grows and grows. It turns very green. It, at the end of this month, the chances of you seeing this thing right here read 30% or 40%. This is very high chance, okay, that this will occur because that's what I do. I, I am most likely... And, and I'm not bragging. I just, I just know from past experience, I will most likely turn this into 30 or 40 percent in one month. This here is the Forex reserves. It's always fluctuating, and there's always a little bit of red. But it's not much. And when I'm, when I'm looking at um, hundreds and hundreds of dollars of growth, and I'm down 50 bucks, 60, or, or let, let's say we're up. $333, okay, that would be a third. We're up $333, but we were down $100. That doesn't bother me so bad. These are Forex reserves, and I know how to get out of them. To, to take and force this thing that's negative and force it to become profitable, even against its will. And I'm, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to show you how to do that, teach you how to do that, and within just a few months, you will completely understand how this works. And you'll see that in actuality, our risk is incredibly small. It is very, very, very limited. Okay? This, this is all temporary. And basically, we're not really going to lose. I mean... We're going to lose little tiny portions, okay? But we're really not going to lose, all right? Look at the, where is it? The New Zealand trades. I was out too soon. Remember, we, we only did three bullets on this. I didn't even get a chance to wash it, really. But here we took a negative trade that was against us by 50 pips, and we forced the trade to pay us out a small amount. Very, very small. wasn't much. Okay, I didn't even really get to wash it. There will be other times that we'll have more bullets, and we'll wash them, and you'll see. It may take a few days, but when it's done, when it's over, you're going to be like, wow, look at that EuroCAD trade now. That's what you're going to say. I'm serious. You'll see it. That EuroCAD trade was against us by 400 pips. If that's what we're going to count it as. In reality, guys, we've got seven bullets fired. We are negative 400 total pips. And you'll see when the trade is over and when it's all done, you're going to look at Euro Canada and say, my God, we made 400 pips. <laughs> it's, good. It's, it's going to be great. You'll see that the risk is really actually very limited through the system and through the way I'm going to show you how to do it. It's, it's not that hard to learn, but I can't, I can't teach it in one hour. It, it's, it takes a little time to teach it, and that's for a whole nother, you know, a whole nother lesson. So uh, anyway, guys, uh, any other questions on the stuff that we talked about today? Anything at all? to make more money. Okay, yeah, I get that. Um, any other questions at all? I went so far overboard, and I'm really sorry for the length of time, guys. Okay, I don't see any other questions right now, so we'll just quit, okay? Make the video small. Maybe we can edit it somehow. I don't know. All right, guys, um, next training is going to be Wednesday. All right, two days from now, 4 o'clock, I will try very hard to make it one session. I will not try and do two and uh, 
now that I know how to get the recorder to work, we should be good, okay? Next session is Wednesday night at 4 o'clock. I promise I will cap it to 45 minutes to an hour maximum. Okay, everybody have a blessed, blessed evening. I will see you tomorrow, okay?